I'm eating a salad, so I for sure have stuff in my teeth. Anyways, hi guys. There's no dialogue in the video you're about to see until the very end because the day I filmed this, I had fucking ulcers all over my mouth. The underneath of my tongue was infected and disgusting and blistering and I couldn't eat for a week. I could barely talk. So I filmed this with no dialogue. So this is my dialogue. Um, I had a whole story time planned for this video and everything. So I guess I'll just be telling you here now, but the problem is like, I already edited this video and I didn't time how long this story was gonna take. So I'm really gonna have to, you know, like I'm really gonna have to, you know, let's just get started. So I'm gonna take another bite of my salad. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so um, in this video, I'm basically just getting ready to go to the strip club. Um, no, my title is not clickbait. I am going to the strip club, but I don't work there, okay? I just am going for my friend's birthday. Um, so yeah, this is what I feel like I should look like going as a patron to a strip club. But anyways, the story that I was going to tell was about the time that I had, what the fuck, was about the time I had amnesia, okay? Um, the true story, I literally died, came back to life, had amnesia. I actually don't know if I actually died, but I'd like to think that I died and came back to life, but I for sure had amnesia. Okay, so the beginning of the story is kind of like long and overly detailed, but I always tell it that way just because I like the full picture to be painted. So it was the summer going into my senior year. So I think it was the summer of 2017. And I was in, uh, sorry, I was in Cabo with Michelle, who you guys know if you've watched any of my other videos, Vivian, who you know if you watch some of my videos, actually a lot of them, Brandon, her brother, um, my uncle Henry, who is Vivian and Brandon's dad, and Chris, my aunt, who is Vivian and Brandon's um, mom. So me and Michelle were like the two cousins who weren't in the immediate family, but we're all so close that it really didn't matter. So we went to Cabo and it was a really good time, you know, fun, blast. And then one day, I think it was still towards the beginning of the trip, maybe like smack dad in the middle, I don't know but um, we were on the beach, the resort, private beach, whatever. And you know, the waves looked kind of rough, okay? So my cousins decided to be smart and not enter the ocean. There was also like not many people in the ocean because I think most people are smart and logical. And I being someone who is careless, stupidly adventurous and fearless in the wrong moments decide that like, I'm gonna show them that the ocean is perfectly safe because I'm not gonna waste my vacation on the sand when I can be in the water. So I go into the ocean, I'm having my own sorts of fun and I'm showing them that it's totally fine. And it was totally fine. And I'm facing towards like the horizon, like I'm facing the ocean, the direction you're supposed to face when you're in the ocean. And basically I just see like the few people that were in the ocean, they're starting to like, hurry and go back to the shore and I hear Michelle, Vivian, and Brandon calling my name telling me to come back so I decide to face my back towards the horizon and go back to shore. Little did I know everybody had rushed and I was taking my leisurely time and that's when things went dark. I know that sounds dramatic but that's exactly what happened. Actually no, that's not exactly what happened. I, I, no, 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 no. And I'm still a little bit fuzzy about all the details but i've recreated the story in my head so this is the story that i have that i stick to um some of the facts might be off but like i just don't remember but anyway so then a giant wave i guess hits me on top of my head like it was a really big one that went over my head and it hit me right on the top i go down to the ocean i get pulled out by the undertow i literally think to myself i'm gonna die i come up for like a second and another wave just as big just as aggressive hits me again and that's when I don't know what happened. I blacked out. That's when I blacked out. The initial hit told me I was gonna die. Like I thought to myself, holy shit, I can't believe this is how and where I died. Anyways, the second hit is when I blacked out. I come to, I'm on the sand. 
I have a bunch of people surrounding me, my cousins, my uncle, my aunt, they're all crying. I'm freaked out. I wake up, realize that, you know, I don't know who any of these people are. So that's when the amnesia had hit. Um, so basically when the amnesia hit, I was like a blank canvas, you know, like I didn't trust any of the people who said they were my family because I didn't know them or I didn't recognize them. But there was a doctor who was on vacation. His name was Preston and I formed a bond with him just because I didn't know anything. I didn't know anybody. And he told me that like, I was fine, blah, blah, blah. So I was holding his hand and I would not let him go. And then we were only separated when I had to go to the ambulance and obviously only family can come. So then I started to be really, really scared again because I was surrounded by people crying and freaking me out, claiming that they knew who I was, but I didn't know who they were. And then we're in the hospital and it's really freaky. And I remember that night, Obviously I had to sleep in the hospital. I had like a neck brace on. There was a bunch of like injuries going on with me. Michelle had to clean me off. She had to like strip me naked and wash all the sand out from my butt crack and vagina. It was traumatic for both of us. She stayed in the hospital room with me. She had a bed. So then I started to form a bond with Michelle. Um, I guess a couple days later, they take me back to the hotel and my parents had flown in the next day. My uncle called them obviously. So my parents and my sister flew in and um, I remember my mom, the first time I saw my mom again was when I was back in the hotel and she was trying to like hug me and I was hyperventilating and crying. And I was like, please don't fucking touch me, you freaking weirdo. But that's, yeah. Um, I was still in Mexico because a doctor there told me that with the stuff going on with my brain, it wasn't safe for me to get on a plane. I guess like the pressure plus brain swelling was like not great. And I'm still not completely sure about all the medical situations that was going on with me. And to be honest, I just don't want to find out because that time was traumatic enough for me. I don't really want like so many details in my mind that I could think back on and be like, damn, what if I got stuck in that situation or, you know, even worse. So I don't ask questions anymore, but um, the plane ride was traumatic on its own. Everybody on that plane was staring at me because I looked like someone who was kidnapped. I had a neck brace on. I had injuries on my face and I was sitting with two people who I didn't feel comfortable with. Oh, all is also, here's the fucking kicker. My sister stayed in Cabo and they all had a great time. They were in the ocean the next day and nothing happened to them. So, I mean, I'm glad they're safe, but what kind of fucking karma was that for me, you know? So me and my parents go home. My uncle, Michelle's dad picks us up from the airport and it was just traumatic, okay? like. They told me that I had my own room and I was like, what the fuck? I don't know anything in here. And so I slept with my mom because after the plane ride, I realized I don't have a choice, okay? I have to trust someone because I'm scared. So I started to trust my mom. Um, just so you guys know, I had amnesia for like a week and a half. And during that week and a half, I lost like 20 pounds. I was so scared I didn't eat. Um, the doctors back at home here in California, basically told me that, yeah, there was some stuff going on with my brain. Like there was a little bit of swelling, but nothing too serious where I had to like get surgery or anything. And they think some of the trauma, like PTSD could also be included into why I had amnesia. So it was a mix of both like physical and emotional slash mental for why I was going through what I was going through. They didn't give any estimate as to when they thought I'd be better. They didn't even tell us if they thought I would get better. So, that entire time period, my family was just preparing to basically raise me again and me being a completely different person. They had to be ready for that. So I think in a sense it was harder for them because for me, the only thing I was going through was like confusion and fear, you know? But they had known this person for 18 or 17, I don't remember how old I was, 17 or 18 years. And all of a sudden they have to, get to know someone else, you know, it's it's weird for them. And it's like, I think it's a lot more for my family and friends than it was for me. Um, so then when I got more comfortable in the home, my mom decided to start calling my friends to my house one at a time. So I'm pretty sure my boyfriend was first, Robert was first. I had no idea who he was obviously, and I was so scared of him. I don't, I just, I was like, how can you tell me I have a boyfriend and then I'm in love with this person? Like that's bollocks as the British would say. Um, I was freaked out. I was crying. I was trying to sit as far away from him on the couch as possible. So that was really bad for him. And then I had friends coming and it didn't help because my friends would like cry in front of me, which made me feel bad and made me want to like remember them even more. So I put a lot of stress on myself to remember them 
just because I felt bad that they were crying and felt all sad and scared for me, but it didn't help. Like I didn't remember anything. And um, so that happened for like the entire week. And then, I mean, there's obviously a happy ending. Like I remember everything. I am who I am. I am the person that I grew up being. Um, the memory came back to me very like progressively. Like it started off with places and like foods and like restaurants and random people like my favorite server at my favorite restaurant. It was not my family members that came back first. So the first thing I remembered was literally this Chinese restaurant that's like in our city that we would go to all the time when I was younger. That was the first thing I remembered. I remember like the green roof of it. So I told my mom and she was like, holy shit. Yeah, that's Hong Kong flower lounge, bitch. Like, I can't believe you remember that before your own fucking mom. But I was like, sorry, Jesus Christ. But anyways, I remembered that place first. So they took me there, we ate there. And then the next thing I remembered was a different restaurant, Crapevine in Burlingham Avenue. And I was like, damn, maybe I was like a fatty in my past life or not my past life, but my former self which I guess I kind of was, but whatever. Um, so I remembered that next. And then people progressively started to come back to me. Um, actually, no, wait, that's not true. The way I got my memory back for everything was at one of my doctor's appointments. It was so weird. So basically every day I had to go to the hospital and I had to just get scans and get checked up on and they would ask me questions about myself and that was every day. And then on one of the days I was in the parking lot going into the office and I literally like gasped for air. Like I felt like I had the wind knocked out of me and everything came back to me. I'm not kidding. That's literally what happened. It's so cinematic. It sounds like I'm lying. You can ask anybody in my life. Well, I was only with my mom at the time. So you can ask my mom, but that's literally how it happened. It was complete bullshit. Like it, I just don't know why that's how I remembered everything. I mean, things were coming back to me, but like everything came back all at once in that moment. And so only me and my mom knew that I had my memory back. And because I was me again, of course I had to surprise everyone because I love surprising people more than I love eating and pooping, you know? So we surprised my sister, we surprised my boyfriend, we surprised my cousin and my aunt. And that's basically what happened. And now we talk about it slightly and in joking ways because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know about me or I think you guys know about me because I've mentioned it before that when it comes to traumatic events in my life I handle it by making jokes so I make a lot of jokes about this situation because it still freaks me out to think that I couldn't have gotten my memory back or like I could have become you know like way disabled you know it's a brain injury like it could have been really serious and I am just so lucky that that's not what happened um and then so um Hold on, my mom just walked in. And then so that's how it ended. And then that's it. So I put these fake nails on and that's the end of the story. Bye. Okay guys, well clearly I'm home. Um, I ripped off all my nails last night and also I came home and peeped violently and then just now this morning finished the most aggressive and like rude alcohol shit of my entire life. I still feel not great, but whatever. My dad's having a party right now. Everybody's in the kitchen. I gotta pull myself together. Rob just left and um, I forgot to film my outfit and my hair, but it was nothing special at all. So that's it for this video. I, I'm fine. Okay, I'm gonna go die now. Love you all, bye.